Okay, so I want to go to I want to go to uh, uh, one of the South African groups. Kasi small business. Uh, the, the business group is called Kasi Small Business. Uh, if there's anybody who's on Kasi Small Business, somebody is asking, what can I do with my laptop to make money instead of watching movies all day? <laughs> yeah, hey, you know the guys in South Africa, they they are very hungry um, to to learn, oh, where do I copy this thing? Eh? I want to copy this. Mm. Ah. Oh, link copied. So I want to go there and say the comment. <coughs> um, Stanley so said you have a laptop to watch movies every day, so I think you have to buy second hand projector. If you have a garage and invite kids to come watch movies first, day free, and following days you start charging from 5 rand to 10 rand per day. Yeah. Okay, so if somebody says you can do, you can do movies, yeah. First day free. Following day you start from five to ten rand. Yeah, you have you have a laptop to you watch movies every day. So I think uh, you have to buy a second hand projector. If you have garage, invite kids to come watch movies, first day free and following day you start charging from five to ten rand per day. Yeah, great idea. In fact, this idea in Malawi used to be common. I remember guys who, who, who made a lot of money showing um, videos. We used to go and watch videos. Somebody who maybe use a garage or hire a hall. Yeah, and yeah. up to now, it still happens. You People. always also said you would do this business when I, I, I come to Malawi. Those days. Yeah, when, we, when, we, when I met my mm -hmm. wife, I used to say, when I go home, I would do a business. I would have a place to show videos and stuff like that. So yeah, I see in South Africa, people are just learning about this now. It's actually a great idea. Um, um, yes, but the laptop can do a lot for you. There's so many things you can do. First of all, I think for you to be able to do a business, a good business, you need to have the proper, proper knowledge, proper skills. So what you can be doing with your laptop is just to uh, to gain some knowledge yeah mm -hmm. yeah like to learn so first of all learn about how to run a business learn about how to market your business learn um, how to sell gain more knowledge until when you know that you've got enough knowledge then you can start uh, thinking of doing a business there are so many businesses that one can do in south africa right now mm -hmm. but also the laptop itself i mean if you are with your android as south african why not start a youtube channel yeah? Because your friends in other countries, like in Malawi, we don't even, people don't have an opportunity to start a YouTube channel because Malawi is not a YouTube partner. But South Africa, you can start a YouTube channel and start making money. Mm -hmm. And South Africa has got a lot of content that people can be shared. You can share um, life in the location. A lot of people will be very interested to, to, to know more about life in the location. Mm -hmm. You can share life in the shippings. You can share life in the taxi industry. You can Daily share, life, you can, yeah, life. there's so many things, street life. I, I, I watched a certain video, somebody just took a video and was walking in Johannesburg. The title was Wrong 10 in Johannesburg. It's got over 1.5 million views. So that guy has earned a lot of money with that video. And I mean, when I watched the video, when he said the wrong 10, I was expecting him getting robbed something or something bad. bad happening, but nothing really happened. But the guy has 1.5 million views. So I don't know. I mean, if you're in South Africa, you've got a laptop, you've got an Android phone, why not start a YouTube channel and start making money without even going around looking for a job? 
Yeah, so I have just shared a link of this uh, live video on the group to answer that question. So if you have clicked on that link, and um, that's my answer to you. Let's see if there's anybody else with somebody. Um, let's see, view more. Okay, so, uh, guys, I, I belong to so many groups in South Africa. I like to go there and share uh, some ideas with the guys. Uh, somebody said, look, look for a second-hand printer and start doing CV and the photocopy. Yeah, you can start um, a, you know, an internet cafe, you know, mm -hmm. with, your, with your laptop. But it's not big money that you're going to make there. It's a small, small change. Um, some Join student groups and offer typing services. Most of them don't get enough time to type. Some don't have laptops. They send handwritten assignments, you type and send back as PDF. So what you what uh, is trying to say, you do secretarial services? Yeah, like typing for people. Okay, so people are still typing things there mm -hmm. up to now. <laughs> okay, uh, somebody said get paid, get paid to work now. Sell it to me, please. <laughs> Teach English online to foreign countries, you won't regret. Yeah, I mean, if you can find a, uh, some place where you can be teaching English or whatsoever, yeah, it's good for you. Help uh, grader 12 to register for next year and also to register for NSPS. I don't know what that is. Option of projector is nice because you won't have doubt that is a scam. You won't have doubt that it's a scam. You can make Mura. <laughs> yeah, like for me, I've got a projector. You remember? Mm -hmm. I've got a projector here. It's brand new. It has never done more than... I don't think it has done even more than five hours. But I made a mistake uh, when I bought a house in Chilimba, where we tiled the house. And that evening I was watching movies, me and Joel, uh, John. We sat in the street and watching movies. But that was after we had just um, grinded the terrazzo floor. So I put a terrazzo floor, so I was grinding that floor. So the dust was in um, all over. So the, the projector has got a fan. So the fan was drawing air to cool the inside, but it was drawing together the, the sand, yeah, the dust. And now the the dust started started showing on the lens. Now when you watch a, a movie, it's full of dots on there. And I'm afraid to take it to somebody to fix it because they might damage it and i'm also afraid to take it to south africa to fix it because they're going to charge me more than i bought it you know so if there's anybody who can fix a projector can it. you can take it wow but uh, they'll charge you a lot of money and i can find somebody to you know you know uh, people people, they, just people. Took the, they charge too much in south africa let me try mm -hmm. what are you drinking Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Learn programming, venture into game development, create a Cassie style games. <laughs> ah, there are guys here in Malawi, they're doing cartoons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're doing um, Chichewa cartoons and they make funny stories and stuff like that. You can open a YouTube channel sharing cartoons that people can be watching and maybe those cartoons could be sharing um, location style stories and you know. Somebody and says, somebody said, teach, English. teach English online. So this is, uh, looks like it's a bit common. Uh, Suzanne Tanda said, it was very difficult for me and my family after being sacked during the pandemic. I'm so grateful to God for letting me come across. So they've got a YouTube channel. Nothing stay posted. She came up. Ah, there might be some of those scam things. Do service, get a TFL certificate and teach English online. If you like games, you can also get into gaming. Somebody said sell it. <laughs> there is actually a lot, but some, if not most of them, need you to put up cash before, yeah, getting started. Yeah. But I mean, your YouTube channel won't cost you nothing. I mean, uh, you make money while you sleep with YouTube. <laughs> get a printer. So more people are talking about internet cafe. Uh, mm -hmm. become an online teacher, uh, ch ask ChatGPT or Bud, they can give you pointers, thank me later. Yeah, ChatGPT even myself is helping me a lot. It helps me to make, to, to, to script my videos. Mm -hmm. It helps me to do titles. It helps me to come up with ideas and stuff like that. So ChatGPT is really uh, uh, make, doing wonders. Or I can teach you how to make website using CMS code WordPress. Register a company, 
download FL Studio logo design YouTube channel. As somebody says YouTube channel. Uh, um, start roofing and repairs. Why? Why would we use? A, how would you use a laptop to start roofs? Try you them and make bags for teaching something only if you have a reliable internet connection. Somebody says catch catch crusader. <laughs> you must take it to catch crusader and sell it. <laughs> Somebody says watch adverts on YouTube. Ah, oh, why watch adverts? Teach English overseas so the teaching is very common. Ask yourself first first what what I, what you passion. Okay, now you are calling scammers to your doorstep. <laughs> Do you have a reliable internet connection as well? Buy a small printer, install a studio, or things like that. Okay, let's see if there's somebody else who asked a question. Uh, uh, please, guys, help me with a nice name for a quarter business. <laughs> this quarter is a, I don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of food that they are, they are now eating, making in South Africa. I think it's like, it's like in, in Cape Town, remember the cat's pay? Almost like cat's pay, but it's like, I think, I don't know if it's bread or what, they put meat and chips on there, so they call it a quarter. And it has been, you don't know quarter? Huh? It's an in thing in South Africa now. People started with the people who started, who started the quarter business in the beginning, they became very, very wealthy with it. So, but now it's like, it's like all over the place. Everybody was just like quarter, 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 you know? <laughs> yeah, so, um, uh, somebody just typed, he said, I managed to start today after two months of planning and searching for ideas. Thank you, hustlers. You know, guys, in South Africa, there are so many business groups. People are sharing ideas every day. Me, I like to go and watch and read some comments. I also sometimes contribute. And it's very nice that the way the guys are doing there, they, they are empowering each other with ideas. And a lot of businesses are coming out of this, these kind of groups. So like now I'm in one of the groups called Kasi Small Business Ideas, K-S-B-I, Kasi Small Business Ideas. Um, <clears throat> let's check. Look who this lady, she's Matilda Mot Jose, she's making puffer jackets readily available for only 300 rands to place your order. What's up? Very nice, beautiful jackets, huh? Like African prints. With African prints and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> a high business owners, what is the reasonable percentage that you should pay yourself from a profit of your business every month? Is this in the group that they talk all the business stuff? Yeah. So this, this group, it's, it's cast small business ideas is like for people who want to start business in the location. Like in Soweto, Alexander, Kairicha, Kayamandi, Guguletu, those places. So this one says, hi business owners, what is a reasonable percentage that you should pay yourself from a profit of your business every month? Okay, normally um, when I was doing um, a grocery shop, um, I used to buy from the, the, you remember, I used to buy from a wholesaler yeah. and they gave me a catalog with all the prices of the goods that um, they sell. So they gave me a, 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 a price that they were selling to me at wholesale and they also, the catalog gave me the recommended prices and the prices were always on 30%. So 30% is the best um, reasonable the 30 percent is very reasonable for you to pay yourself as profit but remember if you make your 30 percent profit you need to also reinvest in the business to make your business grow bigger so it also depends on your lifestyle you know um when you are the start they should, should pay themselves. Huh? they should ask what they should pay so, themselves. so it depends on the business that you're doing 30 percent or 30 percent is a profit Mm -hmm. So profit is what you pay yourself. Mm. Mm, that's the profit. That's what you pay for yourself. So, but but out of the profit, you need to reinvest in your business because if you're just taking that thirty percent, your business is never going to grow. So, like for me, what I would do is I can always I can depending on the lifestyle that I want to live and depending on how much money I'm making, five percent I can I can pay myself out of the profit thirty percent profit. The, the, I mean, 10% uh, I can pay myself, 
the twenty percent I can reinvest in the business. So my business is always going to grow by twenty percent every month. You see. So if you make a profit of thirty percent and you take ten percent to pay yourself and you reinvest twenty percent, it means your business is growing by twenty percent. Huh? That's 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 according to my thinking. Maybe those who went to school, they might say no, that's not the right thinking. But the way I'm thinking is the same way that uh, a, a mother who is in the village, who is selling mandasi, mm. uh, so making mandasi, to be able to support her family and pay school fees. That's no matter what they do. But okay, most of them they don't aim at growing the business, mm. but from the pro from, from the profit that they make. They uh, support the family and they will also pay school fees. But uh, normally, if you, if you haven't gone to school like me, what I normally do is when, when, I, um, when I sell a product from our workshop, when I sell the product, I immediately go to the hardware to replace the stock that I have used to make the machine. So I replace all the stock. After I replace the stock, the remaining money, I will use it to either reinvest to grow the business, to bring in a new product, and then all I will take it to the bank to save. And I make sure that all, for us, we have only been living on just for food. So we, we, the, the, we, then I go to buy enough food. How do I buy food? Okay, for now we haven't been doing it because the economy is not good, but when everything is good, how do I do the grocery? You buy like in bulk. Yeah, I go and buy food for the whole month. So I'll go to ShopRite and buy everything that we need in the house for the whole month. The fridge gets full with, with food uh, for the whole month. Okay, Virginia Longway says, uh, love, you, love your content. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you. We want to be trying to help one another with business. African people, we need to, we need to progress in Africa. Uh, we can't always complain, complain all the time. So the only way to do it is to help one another. Um, I've learned this from, you know, the people who developed YouTube. Mm -hmm. They developed a, a platform where we can go and learn with one another. And on YouTube, I've seen that many people, how their content is about sharing knowledge to other people. Mm. So the people in the West, they're not hiding the knowledge they're sharing. Mm -hmm. You see? But so in Africa, you don't quite often see it. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to be one of those people sharing the knowledge. But so, you're sharing, you've been sharing yeah. for a long time. Yeah. Thank you very much for the cake. You're welcome. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So let's go back to Kasi. Let's see what people have been saying, uh, what advice they gave. Um, somebody says, uh, from gross or, uh, or asking a question, from gross or from net? <clears throat> uh, so he said, like Elijah said, there is no gross or net on profit. Mm -hmm. I don't know uh, what that means. Actually, there is, bro. The other one says, explain, please. He says, in commerce law, all profit made after sales is gross. Net is what you go after taking away all the expenses related to the sale, e.g. transport, cause, uh, e.g. transport, cause made, um, and everything that led to the sale. That's why you got gross salary too. Profit is like the future. It's, it's never what it's supposed to be. If I'm wrong, you can correct me. My knowledge is is finite and like uh, like Elijah says profit is money left after all running costs what you what you say is running cost breakdown or cost costing or costing budget you know for those people who went to school they can be telling you these things and <laughs> the cost budgeting do so so people like us we just look with our eyes open we can't hear what what, what they're talking about for me when I if I have a hundred thousand kwacha and I buy materials. I come here, I make a machine, and I sell that machine at 500. Hmm? The moment I sell at, at 500, I take my, my 100,000 and I go to buy more materials. Then I take money for, my, for paying my guys for salary. And I take money for, um, uh, for what? For our food and whatsoever. 
The remaining burn for me is profit. So uh, that is just for me using common sense. If, like, like for instance, when we started a few years ago, well, just before this economy tumbled, if, if a person comes and says, Ted, I want you to make a machine for me. Yeah? So I said to them, the machine is two million. So they said, so, what, what, how do I, or so how does it work? I said, no, you have to pay me a deposit. And the person says, okay, how much do I pay you? I said, no, pay me half down. So the person gives me one million. I take the one million. In the past, eh, I would take the one million. It would be able to buy all the materials for my machine. Yeah? And then when, I, when the machine is done, I ask the customer to come and collect the machine. He pays me the balance, which is one million. To me, it was my profit. Because... The first deposit, deposit he gave me bought everything, so it was my profit. Recently, because the economy, things have gone higher, and I haven't been able to raise my machine so high. I mean, every time uh, prices of things go up, I was not raising the price much. The reason why I'm doing, doing this is because my competitors come co. So I want to be as more affordable as much as possible uh, than come co. My other competitor, who I won't mention the names, he's also selling all his machines are over, over 2 million. So I want to stay within the 2 million or lower as much as possible so that uh, I'm the most affordable one. You understand? So what has happened now is my profit has uh, gone down. So if a person um, comes and pays me half a deposit and I go and buy the materials, I still cannot buy everything for my machine. So sometimes I'm asking the customer to pay me a little bit of money from the balance for me to go and buy maybe an engine. So like for now, for a two million machine, I'm making something like 400, 400,000 profit. You understand what I mean? So it's not much profit like it was before. So for me, that's how I do, I, I can create my profit. It's just so simple, you know, the traditional way. But uh, then there's uh, so many things that people will be measuring in there. They will measure the time. They will measure the, the whatever, you know. Uh, so, so, yeah. Uh, so, the, Mashaka says there is no one size fits all. It depends on the size of your business. That's what I said. It depends on, the, on your business. It depends on your lifestyle also, you know. Uh, if, if it's a very small business, you may be forced by situation to pay yourself a more significant percentage a more significant percentage for basic survival needs and that percentage goes down according to how large the business is for example if i make 1 million a month why should i pay myself 500,000 when i can survive on 60,000 that's 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 exactly what i'm saying your lifestyle you know mm -hmm. simply have a sense of a sense to reinvest i've also mentioned that that uh, from my profit i want to make sure that i reinvest maybe 10% or 20% of my profit, meaning that my growth, my business is going to grow every month by 20%, you see? But many people don't understand. Even when you own a grocery, if you can use this strategy, your grocery is going to grow bigger and bigger. Who is that? Who is Tamara? Name and address. <laughs> Salary and save the rest. The rest is business expenses. Uh, the other one says, me personally, what I do is I pay myself every end of the week. If I made 2.5 profit in a week, I take 2,000 as my payment and the 500 put on my business account. <laughs> okay, so he's always paying himself the bigger, mm -hmm. more, more than what he invests in the business. But me, I do the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, you can calculate your personal expenses. That should determine your salary. By so doing, you avoid paying yourself little money, only to end up using the business money. Okay. Uh, so other guy says, I'm still smiling. It's been so beneficial trying someone new. The step I take was more better. And now I can, I can smile. God bless you for helping the poor. Ah, these are the scammers. <laughs> uh, profit remains after you pay expenses, which include your salary. Pay yourself a salary based on the industry you are in. Profit percentage percent sounds like dividends. Ngobizi Tamoyo said, calculate rent, calculate rent, living expenses, petrol, maintenance if using a car, entertainment, minimal, minimal, rest, reinvestment, reinvest into the business. Frugal living is the way to generate 
uh, wealth. Kula said 30%. So he agrees with me that the best profit to make on a product is 30%. Lower than 30%, you are stretching it. Higher than 30%, hey, it's a good business like mine, which was doing 50%, you know, in the beginning. Calculate your expenses and minus that from a profit. If profits are less, work harder <laughs> and work smarter. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Is there any questions that are being asked? Um, uh, uh, hey, some this is in Zulu. What business can I start that will get unemployed people hired? <laughs> what? What business can I start that will get unemployed people hired? What does it mean? Means hmm. what business will give will people jobs? So every, every business gives people jobs. Uh, that's a funny question. If you want to start a business or selling clothes, that takes me. Um, this there's a guy who's selling Magari Morama wire, you know, these wire cars. He says, I'm selling this for kids at 400. The car is 250, then you buy them from both only 650. Your support will mean a lot. These things that we used to do in Malawi a long time ago, nowadays you don't see people making wire cars, and this guy is making nice wire cars and selling them. Mm. Uh, guys, my uncle passed away and he. Uh, he a land where he wants to start a business my uncle passed away and he has a land where he wanted to start a business so since his brothers don't want to use the land i want to take it for myself but the problem is i don't know what kind of business i'll be able to do there maybe a garden where, where i sell vegetables or anything can you guys advise me what to start there yeah, automatically he can start a garden, but what kind of uh, plants can he plant there for him to make money fast? Let's see what people are saying here. Somebody says, do you need help with, uh, or do you need help with business plan, proposal and stuff? They're selling him these business plan ideas. Um, not many people help this guy. Somebody says, plant vegetables only if you have water. Yeah, if you, if you have water, you can plant some vegetables there. And then you, um, what, what, what vegetables do you think you can plant there? In South Africa, mm. cabbage. Mm. Cabbage. Mm. Um, potatoes, people like potatoes there. You can plant potatoes, you can plant cabbage, you can plant tomato, you can plant... Um, you must think of vegetables that South Africans like to eat. Because if you talk about like spinach, they don't eat eggplants they don't eat uh, so cabbage potato tomato um, don't plant okra <laughs> yeah plant okra plant, uh, plant okay plant pineapple plant okra only if you know that you're going to be selling to supermarkets so yeah you will get business there because there's not many people that are supplying those and another thing is that pineapple i mean okra and the um eggplants they are almost like special foods that have been uh, bought by special people who have got maybe special needs for the health and stuff like that so they are they, they sell good mm -hmm. and also make sure your your mm -hmm. your, your vegetables are organi organic so hopefully there's somebody who's got uh, like chicken mm -hmm. goats so that you can get manure there and you'll be, be putting on your on your vegetables because if you're planting it organically you will make money selling it mm -hmm. to supermarkets you can even sell it to restaurants also That's there's a lot of business for you to do this. yeah so let me tell him um okay let me paste the uh, uh okay so
Okay, so yeah. Uh, somebody says cottage renting rooms, get someone who's gonna open a spaza shop, he will pay you rent every end of the month for using your place, but then it means you have to build, you have to have money to build something. You know, somebody says pig and chicken farming if it's in the rural areas. That's true. You can have the chickens there. You can have your pigs there. Somebody says before starting anything, it's better to have a sign, to have a sign contract with the family and agreement before you start something. All those solar, just to be on the safe side. Um, somebody says chickens, bra. If you got water, go for vegetables. Um, somebody says stop contributor or oh, uh, somebody says grow food somebody says you can start farming start a poultry business thanks for the advice guys I will post that land if not that big it's oh, it's not that big so it, it's not a big land so it's a small garden you can just start a small business there like grow vegetables so I mean, you can grow fast growing vegetables so I don't know what I'm fast, fast to growing vegetables you're not you're not contributing here, ne? <laughs> ah. I don't know. Hmm? You have been in business for quite a long time, you should be able to know. Okay, so uh oh, what is <laughs> let's see if there's hello guys, I'm twenty-five years old. I started this business three years ago. <clears throat> Of struggling because I started with an umbrella until I worked hard to buy the tent because in winter I couldn't sell much because I sell drinks it goes too much in summer so at least now I started to sell also coffee tea hot chocolate cappuccino Milo. sorry for not shooting them I I bought them recently this month but I promise I will take full pics and come back with it thank you guys for your support okay so he's one of the guys that's on the group um, has learned a lot from the group and then he started his own building, um, uh, his own uh, business. So it's a small little stand, he's put a, a tent and he's selling some drinks there. I remember when we, when we, when I was, before I met you, mm. I used to sell some curios in St. George's, St. George's Mall, uh, Green Market Square in Cape Town. Mm. So one day I went to clicks there was a there was a clicks just be around the corner so when i went there i discovered that that clicks had uh, soft drinks like coca cola fanta on on special yeah so for instance if we, if we fanta was selling a two rand they were selling it at, at one rand i don't know what, why they were doing that there was like on weekly basis there would be a day that they would they would sell it for they always do that so what we, we used to, I don't know, still so what we used to do is we we, we buy uh, we bought I bought um, a cooler box, so I'll go and buy ice, and then we go to that clicks and then um, buy the the what the Coca Cola, and then we will employ some ladies who are coming from Kukuletu, and then we count the Coca Cola we give you we give that cooler box to one of them and you count how many, and then they walk around with a, cooler, a, a tin on top of the cooler box and you used to make something that will hang around on the, the cooler box and they walk around the market and inside Cape Town and we'll find that within a few minutes they are back the, the Coca-Cola is finished and you run to the clicks and you buy more even the, the, the people working at clicks they used to love it because every time we come and buy grocery and they used to know us so in South Africa you can always be do business with you remember when we had a shop okay guys those who have got who are in south africa and have got um a mobile shop or a grocery or spaza let me share with you a, a trick that i used to do when i was in south africa i don't know if you remember this every thursday what were, what were we doing every thursday do you remember giving the kids a sweet okay now the, giving the kids a sweet okay first what we did was um when i used to go to the wholesale they would give me a catalog, and on the catalog there was the price of the items that I'm, uh, we are going to, we are buying. Eh? So they will give you the wholesale price, and they will give you a selling price. So everything was the price, the selling price was done for already for you. So when we when we bought the stock and came out to the location, I had to investigate what my competitors the prices were. 
and I discovered that they were not using the prices that were on the on the catalog. They were making their own prices, and they were much higher. So, for instance, if bread, if if if, if we, a bottle of Coca Cola was selling at five rand, those people were selling it at five rand fifty. You understand what I mean? So they were selling the Coca Cola maybe five rand fifty. So what I did. I also was selling, because 5 Rand was the recommended price. So if I sell at 5 Rand, I was making 30% profit. So, but my, my, my competitors are selling at 5 Rand 50. So I would also sell at 5 Rand 50. And then the extra, that extra 50 cents, what was I doing with it? You remember? Mm, the sweets. Yeah. So what I would do is, uh, if a kid comes to buy the Coca-Cola, because we are supposed to sell it at five rand, but everybody else is selling at five fifty. So I'm also forced to sell at five fifty. So the fifty cents I was using it for marketing. So if a kid comes and buys that Coca Cola, I give him a free lollipop. And that time, free uh, lollipop was also selling fifty cents, mm -hmm. but uh, I was buying it cheaper than fifty cents. So what I would do is I'll give that kid the Coca Cola plus a lollipop. So it was the lollipop was going for fifty cents, and a, spark, a packet of knickknacks was also fifty cents then. So, so I'll tell the kid to choose between a lollipop and a knickknack. And then the kid get excited, they buy this 1.5 liter Coca-Cola going home with a lollipop. So suddenly the kids now used to know that if every time you go and buy a soft drink in that shop, they give you a free lollipop. So the, the parents will, buy, will send the kid maybe to buy two bottles of, of 1.5 Cokes. What the kid would do, we would split the money between him and a friend and say, okay, you also buy, I also buy. Because if they come to me and they buy two bottles at one time, they still got one lollipop, you remember? So the kids will split the money, they'll come to me, each one of them will buy a bottle of 1,5 and go home with a lollipop. And we, we, we extended that to even bread. Yeah? So if they want to buy bread, there, there was not much profit on bread. If they want to buy bread, uh, they will still come here to buy bread from us and they get a lollipop. And we also did some other items which you remember I said if they buy anything, if they buy from us more than a certain amount, if they buy like for more than 10 rand, they get a free lollipop or a free packet of, uh, of chips. Something free. Guys, my shop grew very, very, very fast. You remember? <laughs> <laughs> it grew very, very fast. So this is actually one of the strategies you can use if you are in the location. If you are selling the, your stuff at much higher prices, you can use the, the extra profit that you're making to use it for marketing. So you give, give away some free stuff for, your, for the kids, more especially the kids. Because like we were targeting kids because we know the parents, they normally don't go to the shop to buy things. They send the kids here. Yeah. And then within a short period of time, we started selling meat. What we used to do, what, how did we sell meat? You used to write down what people come and they ask for. Yeah. They, there was like certain amount of people asking for one thing. No, I'm talking about the meat. What I did, uh, there was a, a, a place where they, the shop, they would sell a box of uh, 50, 5 kgs, is it 5 kgs mm -hmm. or 10 kgs of, of chicken? Mm -hmm. So I would buy that box. And then I also buy that packaging material. I even bought a wrapper. Mm. So we would take, we, we would take the, chi the box of chicken, we bring it uh, home. Then we buy these trays where you put your meat. And then, you know, the foil ones. There's those foil things that you, they put meat on. So I buy those ones. I used to buy like a, a big barrel of that. Then I'll take all the pieces from the box. Then I'll be putting in each packet, maybe three pieces, three pieces, three pieces, three pieces. Then count how many of them they are there. And then I, I come up with a price and I'll say, okay, one, pa one packet is maybe four rand or two rand or, or three rand. But I'm, I, I cut, when, I, when I count them, they are more than the amount of money. That time we were buying a box of chicken for five kgs around 30 rand. Mm. Yeah. So I used to make sometimes about 60 rand from that, making a 30 rand profit. So that was also one, one of the things that we did. The things she's talking about, about writing. When we started a business, we made sure when we had a book, I told her that every time a person comes and asks for something that we don't have, if somebody comes and says, I'm looking for a box of matches, and we don't have a box of matches, so we used to write. So we write box of matches. If somebody comes and says, I'm looking for a candle, so we write candle. 
And then at the end of the week, and then if a person comes again and says, I'm looking for a box of matches, so this time is the second time, so we make a tick like that. And then at the end of the week, because I used to go and buy stock at every end of the week, so I will look at, so I was doing this same strategy I was talking just a while ago that I was making sure my shop is growing for a certain percentage every week. So after we sold everything, I replaced the stock that I have, but I introduced something new. So the new thing that I was introducing was the one that has got more ticks on the list because it doesn't make sense for you. If people are asking, well, a lot of people are asking for candles, it doesn't make sense for you to bring in laser blades. You know, so the one that has a lot of ticks was being introduced uh, first. Every time uh, we introduced the one that has got more ticks at the end of the week, and then the, the shop started growing slowly but surely. Within three months, the neighbors, the neighboring shops were already, you know, feeling it. feeling it that uh, there's a guy here, he's doing a business here. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. If you've got any questions that you'd like to ask, please feel free to ask. I can ask. More especially for those who are doing spas, if you wanted to get some ideas, um, I can share a little bit of the knowledge that I had. Okay, so somebody's posted this is okra. Eh? This is okra. Hi, we back for the chili lovers and weekend ahead, but it looks like it's okra that was in there. What do you think? Mm. Um, so he's selling chili. Um, mm. uh. Guys, there are two types of businesses that I want to start, but I still need more information before I start. I want to start a sound system business for hire. What brands of speakers is good for events? And how much the, 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 that will cost to me? I want to join the scooter business like these people who does the deliver of checkers and other stories. Do they need a driver's license or must just buy a scooter? I don't know if the scooter needs a license in South Africa. I don't know. But I think uh, you don't need a school, uh, license for the scooter because um, it's those little bikes that... Um, so if one can buy that bike, you can be doing deliveries, more like pizza deliveries and all those kind of things. Uh, but for sound system, you remember I tried, yeah? Mm, DJ. How did it go? It didn't go so well. It didn't go so well. <laughs> yeah, so we tried to do it. I had bought a sound system yeah? mm. and it didn't, it didn't go well. Um, the, the sound system, maybe now it can work, but I don't think it's a very good idea. But if you can have yourself a camera, you know, um, for, for those who are watching me from South Africa, this is what the guys do here in Malawi. For weddings, um, if you have got a camera, you can have a camera, you have a, a laptop, you can go to a wedding and you can be taking pictures for the wedding, but you can also do videos for the wedding. And um, I saw in South Africa, the people do also videos for the wedding, you know, but they would just take videos and others. But here in Malawi, the guys who are doing the videos, uh, the videographers, they're being very creative because they will make the whole wedding process as a, as a, as a, as a story. So it's almost like it's got a script. So uh, when you're watching a wedding video for Malawi, uh, it's almost like you're watching a, a movie or something or, or a reality show. So. If you can introduce that in South Africa, I am sure you're going to make a lot of money. And another thing is, if you also got a, a good camera that you can take um, HD photographs, you can start a business of taking HD pictures for people, uh, but you can also go to uh, like a mall and you can, because each and every mall has got a place where they process pictures. So you can be taking pictures of people at the mall and then you quickly go and you, uh, process the pictures for them. Or oh, you can take the pictures and transfer the pictures um, to their phone, you know, so that they can access it when they go home and they can share it on WhatsApp or they can share it on their Facebook profile or stuff. Good business, guys. There's guys here in town, they're doing these things. They have even a uh, uh, background uh, curtain, everything that they put there by, at the parking in the mall. We went to Yeah, when we went to Salima. 
mm. this mm. guy was taking our pics yeah. and we transferred yeah when we HD. went yeah we went to the beach somebody took pictures of us and we paid him and he made good money he just transferred the pictures to our phone so you can be doing this kind of businesses guys just get yourself a nice camera and just learn a little bit of uh, camera tricks online you know yeah I am a photographer. How do how do I market myself to get more customers? Is that a question? <laughs> Is that even a question? <laughs> eh? If you are a photographer, okay, let's see. Um, let's let's tell him to to watch. Share your photos on your social media page, Facebook, LinkedIn. Yeah. You yes, yes, that's why I'm right sorry. Here. Yeah, so you can you can actually share. Okay, so this guy is asking. He, he he's got um, he's got uh, he's, he's a photographer. He doesn't know how to market himself to get more customers. I mean, his profile. Let's 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 check his profile and see uh, what what is he doing himself being a photographer. Uh, where is his view main profile? Yeah, he's got a couple of pictures um, that he's sharing there. So uh, he's already marketing himself. So he can put it in different groups. Uh, yeah, so you can, yeah, he can he can share in groups. He can share on WhatsApp. Um, he can he can visit um, weddings. I mean, at the wedding, even if you're not booked, you can actually just come with the camera. Mm -hmm. You say, I, I, I can take pictures you if you want. You can post these things on YouTube. Yeah, whenever there's a function anywhere else, um, maybe there's a street bash or something like that, you just go with your camera and you take people. People want to have their memory, uh, uh, what you call the memories on camera. Mm -hmm. You can walk around even at the taxi rank. You know, when people are, are going to work and you talk to them, I've got a camera, I can take you nice pictures and, and transfer it to your phone. I'll charge you a rand a picture or two rands a picture. You know what I mean? With a camera, you can't be staying home, hungry at home. You can't. And with the social media age, people it's, like to. Uh, yeah, social post media. Their if, whatever they do. Mm, I can see that your camera is a good camera. You just maybe you just need to be uh, to learn more online. Please go online and learn some photography skills so that you can start doing. Uh, good photographs. I can search for some guys, Malawian guys who are doing this and I can share a link with you so that you check how these guys are doing the photographs because the guys here they are very good with their photographs. They're doing very very well. So yeah, you can, the pictures that you're doing, I uh, see most of them you don't choose, you are not selecting be, uh, nice backgrounds. What you can be doing is you can get yourself a background thing. What do, what do they call that thing? Backdrop. A backdrop. So you can design backdrops for yourself and you can be walking around with those backdrops so that people can take pictures behind those or in front of those backdrops. So yeah, uh, there's so many ways you can market yourself. But you must remember, your work will speak for itself when it comes to photography. So. Um, you can tell people you're a photographer, but when they see your pictures, you know, a picture must be telling a story, a picture must be uh, attracting the people, you know. Yeah, so that's what can happen. But he has some pictures, I, I think the one he did for Kam Takani pictures, they're looking good. So, mm. Mm. yeah, so that's what you can do, my friend. I've just shared my link to my live. If you have any questions, please ask me. Feel free to ask. So, we go back to the... Hmm? Where is Gassi? Yeah. What are you selling? Uh, there's a guy who's selling some oranges. Don't be ashamed of your side hustle. He's selling oranges, a pet around the back. Um, uh, I managed to start the day of the two months.
Guys, I have only 500 rand. I want to start a business. What can I sell? But I'm just a student doing grade 12. Help me with ideas. Grade 12. So he's a, he's a, he's a young kid. Metric. Metric. Why not go and do the wholesale and buy some sweets and sell it to your friends at school? What do you think? Mm -hmm. mm, you take, uh, buy sweets, sell it to your friends at school. Um, I don't know what else the, 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 with 500 rand you could be able to do with that as a young kid. Um, there are places, Chinese shops that are selling some toys. I mean, sell toys to some other younger kids in your area, at your home. Um, like I said, best is go to a hostel, buy some sweets, sell them, buy uh, small packets of chips, sell to your friends. Uh, I think you can start from there. And it would give you a learning um, experience. Yeah. And you can, you know what? What I'm just telling you, it's how most of the Somalians have started business in South Africa. I remember when the Somalians just came to South Africa um, because the, de the time that I started going to South Africa, there were not a lot of refugees there. Mm -hmm. But uh, over a certain period of time, we started seeing refugees here and there. And these refugees, they didn't have any f uh, form of income. So what they would do is they would go and buy a big packet of, from the wholesaler, where I used to buy, you know, buy a big packet of chips and they would walk around in, in town selling these chips. So when people buy the chips, when it's finished, they rush back to the wholesale, get another packet, you know, then it's coming with two packets, you know, then, then it's, it's, it, he, the demand is getting high, he employs a woman from, from the location, give her a bucket, you make it like a, it's almost like a, best, a basket with a, a string, and they walk around selling those chips. So the, the, when that woman's stock finishes, she replenish, 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 and then he's making more money, he employs another lady. Before you know it, he's got like 10 women that are working for him. And then suddenly, he's got enough money, he, he puts a stand. So he's got a stand, there's chips, there's what, and there's all these things. And he's just growing, just like that. Ba, 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 ba. Within a year, he's parking a car in the parking lot. <laughs> and that's how fast it was. And I remember also, at that time, you know these people who help at the supermarket? You know, with trolley pushes? That time, like now, you can see many South Africans who are doing it. But at that time, South Africans never wanted to do that push of, pushing of flores. It was being done by the, the refugees from uh, Congo, the guys from Congo. And what they used to do is they never ask anybody for money. So when people go in the shop to buy stuff, when they come out with a trolley, they will come and help them with a the trolley. So they push the trolley to the car, and what they did, when you were coming in the shop, uh, the shop, they were also like, they just assigned themselves as guard, guard, guards, car guards. Mm. And uh, right now, I think it's a regulated business whereby the people now are having like uniforms and it's like a, it's like a business. Mm. But at that time, what these guys would do, just buy themselves a reflector jacket, jacket. They talk to the owner of the, um, the, uh, the manager for the shopping uh, complex that I'll be helping cars to you know, help them to park and stuff like that. So when the people are coming, they help them, show them a parking lot, because sometimes there's so many cars, when you're going into the parking lot, you don't know where to park. So these guys, they know there's an empty park, so they will tell you, help you, you know, reverse, and when you start, oh, thank you, madam, and whatever, then you go in, the, the madam goes in the shop, buys the groceries, coming out of the door, pushing the trolley, he quickly goes, takes the trolley, he knows where the car is, he comes to the car, and he starts offloading the stuff, packing it in the boot, and she gives him two rand. I remember this time, a lot of people, South Africans, used to laugh at these guys. They say, ah, car guards. What do they call it? Car guards. Eh? Mm. They say, ah, these are car guards and stuff. But how come these car guards are living in the flats in good houses? Mm. I mean, two, two, two rand per, per car. At the end of the day, they were going with like 500, 1,000 rands. And that time, 1,000 rands was a lot of money. By the end of the month, they have got enough money to pay rent. And what they were doing, they would stay a couple of people in one flat. So in that flat, each one of them is paying like um, 500 to, to, you know, they contribute. Mm. And then they're living a nice life. They didn't even live in the shacks. They didn't live in the location. They were sitting in the flats, enjoying themselves and making money. So that's how those guys used to make money. <laughs> like for me, the idea that I told my wife is that I wanna, if I have money one day, I go back to South Africa, I will start a tuk-tuk business. And this tuk-tuk is not going to go in the locations. 
is going to go in the areas where, you know, like suburbs. So when the people are buying from the supermarket, you find there's a lot of people who are sleeping in suburbs. They come to the supermarket and then they buy the groceries, they put them in the car and they go. So for me, I'm going to be a substitute and say, okay, when you want to come to buy to the supermarket, you don't have to drive your car here anymore. You just call me, have a WhatsApp group, a number. They will just call me and say, Ted, come and pick us up in the house number so 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 you go with your tuk tuk you pick them up you bring them to do the shopping when they finish the shopping you get them up drop them at home i'm sure by the end of the day when more special like, like on a saturday and sunday you will be going with a lot of man you see what i mean mm -hmm. because what you're doing is you're saving them the trouble of just driving the car to just go and buy two bags of groceries and you can even extend the service to say i can do the shopping for you you understand what i mean so they can just say, okay, Ted, um, we need this, 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 this. Because if your business is doing all right, you might be having the money, you know. So we need this, this, this groceries. They give you a list, you go and buy, and you go there, and then you give them their money. So when you're in a shop, the list of staff, you call them or WhatsApp them. This is the amount that, they, that is required. They tell you it's fine, you pay, you go, they give you your money, but you charge them for the delivery of the groceries. You're in business. You understand? The other idea that I heard about South Africa is there's a lot of people in South Africa in suburbs like the Santon, if you're in Johannesburg, you know, each and every city in South Africa has got a suburb. But in the suburbs, one of the challenges that those people have is to look after their garden. You understand? So you can come to them and tell them that, you know, um, you see that there's, there's these people of the big house and the big yard. At the back, there's a garden that, you know, sometimes it's, they're struggling to maintain. So you tell them, you say, okay, I want to be growing vegetables in your, at the back of your garden. So I'll grow the vegetables, but depending on how big the space is, huh, I, I'm not going to pay for doing, doing the, the vegetable garden. But I allow you to be able to, you know, if you want to take some carrots and you can take, you know, understand me. So you grow tomatoes, carrots, and whatever. So whenever they need the vegetables, carrots, and whatever, they can, they can be able to help themselves. But me, the remainder, I'll be, I'll be harvesting that and go and sell it to the market. So I don't need to have land for me to be able to grow. So I can have maybe 10 houses in Santo where I'm doing that. What, what the people are gonna like is like, you, you can motivate them to say, okay, you got children, you know, your children can learn also gardening and stuff. So when I'm doing my gardening, I can be sharing ideas with your daughter or son and stuff like that. Even make their son a small little garden for him where he's going to grow his tomatoes while you are busy doing what you're doing. You understand what I mean? They will like it because now they have free vegetables. Their kids are learning how to do, you know, play around with garden stuff. But also their backyard is going to look nice. So you do nice gardening there. You plant your carrots, you plant your cabbages and stuff. In the meantime, I can have so many, so many houses that I'm doing that business, you know, growing those vegetables in Santon or some other areas, Berio, whatever. I do that kind of business. And then my business starts growing, you know. I buy myself a vehicle and then I can go and, and uh, try to look for that, some of the people because there's a lot of street people now in St. Johannesburg. People who used to have decent jobs and they've lost these jobs, you know. They lost the job because... Um, because of the economy, you know, but if you find that there's a, a, a couple that are in the street, you tell them, you know what, I can give you a job. You buy them uniform whatsoever, and then they will be going to work in that garden for you, you know. So they, they have uniform, now they've got something to do. You see what I mean? Now you have well, businesses in, in Santo, then I can go to Cape Town, do the same. I can go to Durban, do the same. I can do Kimberley, you know, just spread those things around. So. These people, what your, job, your business is to find the places where these vegetables are going to be supplied. So you will go to restaurants, you tell them this initiative is to help people who are homeless and stuff like that. So please be, give us business, we'll be supplying you with tomatoes and other stuff. Why business? <laughs> That's something that I would like to do mm. when I have the, the time to do it in South Africa. Are you tired now? Hmm? What do you think about these ideas, guys? There's plenty of ideas you can do uh, in South Africa. Um, so, guys, please uh, let me know what you think about these ideas. Uh, but now, I think we have... <laughs>
spoken quite a lot for a while now, so I think we've shared good information. So for those who are uh, able to grasp something, this is an opportunity for them. So yeah, what do you think? Yep. All right, guys, any questions you have? If you don't have any questions, uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I might share it on my YouTube. So if you're watching it from YouTube, uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and leave a comment. I did a video yesterday um, about young people. I shared it on my YouTube. The views are going up. I don't know. I'm waiting for that day when I'm going to make a viral video. Uh, because if I can make a viral video that will give me something like 100,000 views to uh, over 100,000 is going to boost the channel. Uh, if you are um, watching me from South Africa, I have got a YouTube channel. It's called Block929. Please go there and uh, subscribe. I'm sharing a lot of ideas for young business for businesses for young people in South Africa. So yeah, if you go there, there will be a lot of information that you can uh, get about my uh, about doing a business in South Africa. So yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe.